all skillful qualities, the Buddha said, are rooted in heedfulness. Heedfulness is a recognition that there are dangers. The world is a dangerous place. Your mind is a dangerous place. But it also learns how to take those dangers in stride, realizing that there are skills you can develop to minimize the dangers. And even though outside dangers are always there, you can learn how to overcome the dangers inside the mind. The practice of virtue, concentration, and discernment are basically survival skills. Attitudes of goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy, equanimity, learning how to develop those in all situations where they're needed, those are survival skills too. As a famous philosopher once said, we live forward but understand backward. We're going to live in the world and we're going to have to make choices about what to do. A lot of those choices are based on what we've seen in the past, but sometimes things in the past can't give us guidance as to what we're facing right now. So we're always taking a chance, but you're trying to minimize the chances. At the very least, approach every situation with an attitude of goodwill. So that if you make a mistake, it's not from your own ill will. It's simply because your good, your goodwill was not well enough informed. And that kind of mistake is a lot easier to live with. If you come in a situation hoping to harm somebody else and then you get harmed, well, in one way you got what you deserved. But if your basic underlying intention was good, then if it turned out that it was misinformed, there's a lot less to criticize yourself about. It's a lot easier to talk it over with somebody else. So think of goodwill as a survival skill. Concentration is a survival skill as well. When the Buddha was teaching his son how to practice concentration, he started out by saying, make your mind like earth. Whatever gets thrown in the earth, the earth doesn't react. If you're going to meditate, you have to have that kind of solidity inside, because that's what allows you to see what's actually going on, to recognize when something is not going on well and not get too upset about it, trying to keep your cool as you face what's wrong here, what can I do to change it. And if I can't figure out how to change it right now, how can I sit there and watch it? Part of your ability to live with a mistake or a difficult situation is to have something inside that is a place you can return to. Of having that attitude of keeping your mind like earth, that's one thing you can do. Another is to learn to be on good terms with your breath so that you have a sense of well-being. This is your center. This is your home. No matter where you are, this is your home. So when situations outside are difficult, you remind yourself, okay, they can't take my home away from me. That's your safe place. When you're operating from a safe place like that, then it's a lot easier to try new things out. It's a lot easier for you to be more ingenious in thinking up new solutions to problems that present themselves. So this is why we keep returning to the breath and try to being, learn how to be on good terms with it. Have at least some spot in the body that is your home. Where there is a sense of well-being. And then learn how to maintain that sense of home and that sense of well-being as you go through life. It's when something unexpected comes up, at the very least you're not too far away from home. It's like those rabbits and squirrels and things that you drive along at night. They're on one side of the road and their home is on the other side of the road. And so they go running in front of the car. That's what happens if your home is too far away. But if your home is on the, this side of the road, okay, you stay on the safe side of the road. You don't go running out in front of the cars and say, well, you want your, your home to be right here, as close to the mind, as close to the body as possible. 
And the breath is the closest thing to the mind. It's your basic experience of the body. Even before you experience the solidity of the body, there's, there's the energy that gets you in touch with it. Make that your home, so you always have a safe place. And then reflect on that chant that we had just now, aging, illness, and death. They're normal. Separation is normal. What you have to hold on to is your, your karma, the actions you do. For most of us, aging, illness, and death are not normal. Separation is not normal. And we're caught like the deer in the headlights when these things come. There's a Thai expression when somebody gets surprised or startled by something or something really disastrous happens. They say, I'm dead, I'm dead, which is absolutely the wrong attitude to have. You're not dead. Or like in English we say, I'm finished. You're not finished. There's always some way out. And the Buddha gives you a skill here with a meditation, so even if you do die, you know what to do. You don't go latching onto anything unskillful that comes up in the mind. So you're not finished. There's always some way out. Always have that attitude. And there's always a skillful way to approach things. And you have the right, and you have the to take that skillful approach. It's up to you now to learn the internal skills, the equanimity, the goodwill. All these are the good qualities of mind which give you a firm foundation. So your mind can be like earth, it doesn't have to react. And so that you can take dangers in stride. Because all too often our way of dealing with dangers is to ignore their that they're there. And then, of course, when they show up, we're startled. We're caught off our guard. But the Buddha always has you have your guard up. And this is what we learn as we learn how to sit here with the breath and be watchful. Because you remember, of course, that the real dangers are not as so much the dangers outside, they're the dangers in your own mind. A little thought can sneak in and take over and push you in all kinds of directions if you're not careful. So try to be with the breath, try to get a sense of the breath filling the body, your awareness filling the body, and then find a spot someplace inside. It can be like the spider in a web. The spider stays in one spot, and as soon as something hits the web, it goes over and checks it out. It takes care of it, and it goes back to its spot. So if you see the stirring of any kind of thought anywhere in the body at all, Go breathe right through it, zap it, and then return to your center. And in the beginning there may be a lot of zapping going on, but as time goes on, the mind can spend more and more of its time in its center, just being watchful, having that sense of being solid like the earth. You're in a place where you belong. This is your home. You're coming from a safe place. And even though the world outside may be a dangerous place, you've learned how to make your mind safe. And that will enable you to deal with any danger outside at all. Because remember, what you need to preserve more than anything else is in line with that fifth reflection, Gamasa Gomiyam, the owner of my actions. Don't let outside circumstances push you into doing anything unskillful. Yeah, you may have to make sacrifices. It's like playing a game of chess. We all want to win at chess and keep all our pieces at the same time, and that's impossible. You realize you live in this world, there are sacrifices you have to make. To have a clear sense of what sacrifices don't matter all that much and which ones would be really, really detrimental. As the Buddha said, there are two things you want to maintain. You want to maintain your virtue and you want to maintain your right view. He says a loss of those is serious. As far as external losses, those are not nearly as serious. 
because when things outside are lost, they can be regained. But if you lose your virtue, you lose your right view. It's going to be a long, long time before you can get those back. And you can do a lot of damage in the meantime. So have a sense of your home, a sense of where you are strong, and a sense of what your valuables are. Your virtue, your concentration, your discernment. And you find that if you're not too eager to hold on to any other thing, you can protect your genuine valuables. Now, even though you make inevitable mistakes in life, you can take them in stride. And even though there are inevitable losses in life, you're still holding on to things of real value.